Hello, this is Jason Robinson from Illustration by Design. Uh, this is another live stream. Uh, this time I'm going to be drawing uh, the 1980s action star Steven Seagal, uh, who is still acting, actually. <laughs> but uh, all of his, most of his movies are uh, straight to video now, so unless you really keep up with them, you probably haven't seen much of the stuff he's been doing. Um, I mean, I don't really keep up with him that much myself, but, you know, he's still acting, um, still doing kind of weird things, so, um, you know, he's, uh, he's around, but, uh, anyway, I figured I'd draw him, he's an interesting character, and, uh, you know, he has an interesting face, so I figured it'd be a good subject to draw. This is gonna be a, probably be a faster live stream than usual, just because I have to go to a figure drawing class tonight and uh, I need to get some stuff done so I can't spend a lot of time on this but I'm gonna get started in a few minutes I just need to get some, some reference form and then I can start drawing so uh, you guys just hold on for a few minutes I will uh, I'll be right back hold on let's see While you're waiting, I'll just leave this. This is a drawing I did a few days ago of Superman. So, I'll be right back though, okay? Okay, got it. Hey, the animated one's here. How you doing? Good seeing you. Sorry, I was just uh, looking for some reference for uh, Steven Seagal to draw from, so I need to go on the interwebs and uh, find it. Hope you're doing well. Let's see here. All right, here we go. Plug this back in. Alright, now I can start drawing. Ugh. Too much stuff to do, too much, not enough hands to do it with. Uh, as 
zoom in a little. Do that. Move that over. That should be good enough. All right. Let me get going with this. If you guys have any questions or anything, just feel free to ask. And I will try to answer it. And I'll be mainly checking, looking at the reference, so uh, if you say something, I don't answer immediately. It's just because I can't see it, so I will check back with the chat every so often. And, uh, yeah. Um, let's see, it's now 3.54, so let's see if we can get this done by maybe 5. That would be a, that'd be a hat trick. seeing you. Eric Hawkins is here. Hey, good seeing you. Yeah, I'm just going to start drawing Steven Seagal, so. Interesting guy. Um, kind of a nut, but, and, uh, I don't know. I liked his movies when they first came out, but, uh, as he, as he made more of them and he started getting weirder and weirder, um, his movies became more, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I guess I still kind of enjoy seeing him in movies, but he's I, it's its more for the humor, unintentional humor, than anything else. Um, so. Probably would have made a good. He probably would have made a good kingpin for uh, for Daredevil. <laughs> Looking at him now, but My apologies. It's uh, this drawing arm that's holding the phone. It's getting in the way of my being able to see. So it's kind of hold on. Gotta adjust it. So now why does everything look crooked? It should not. Uh, Eric Hawkins says he was always a little cheesy. I did like the one on the boat with Tommy Lee Jones and Erica 
Alaniac. Um, yeah, I mean, that was probably his, uh, his best movie. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Um, I mean, I just remember some of his cheesier movies, well, the, like uh, Fire Down Below. That was just, that was really bad. Um, I mean, it got to a point where you know, Steven Seagal would, it was almost, he almost became a cartoon of himself, where, you know, he'd be chasing a guy, and the guy would be running full tilt down the street, or, you know, trying to run away from Steven Seagal, and Steven Seagal would just be walking, you know, casually, and he would catch up to the guy, running full tilt. So, um, yeah, uh, Eric Hawkins says he always had one-liners. Yeah, they all did back in the 80s, so, um... But Steven Seagal was, uh, I mean, he, he, you know, he, he was, I guess, unique because he used, he used a keto as opposed to, I guess, what most people would consider traditional martial arts. Um, so that was, you know, he wasn't kicking people in the head. He was just sort of, like, moving to the side and then slamming their heads into walls and glass ca cases and stuff. So that made him stand out. Um, and also his whole... His whole general look was kind of interesting, but, um, oh, yeah, Eric Hawkins says, uh, I guess his most serious role was in a movie with Kurt Russell, and he died in the next, in the first 30 minutes. Yeah, I, I thought that was his best role. I thought he, he I thought that was very cool, um, because, uh, I'm not sure, if, was he a surprise actor in that movie? He may have been, because I, I think I remember being surprised when the, um, I think the two planes were trying to connect to each other or something, um, and he gets caught during the transfer of, uh, of soldiers from one plane to another, and, uh, yeah, that was, it, it, I thought it was, that was really cool, I wish he had done more stuff like that, not, not roles where he dies necessarily, but roles where he, he acts more, more serious and less sort of cartoony, so, yeah. I can't, I can't even remember the name of the movie right now, but it was a cool role. Anyway, let me let me get this drawing done because, like I said, I need to get get it finished. So I'm gonna speed things up, talk less. usual the hard part is just getting the proportions right for uh, all of his uh, various various parts of his face so it's a tricky part Yeah, executive decision. That's that's probably the name of it. Um, Evan. So, like I said, it's been a while. I mean, I've, I haven't seen this since it was, since I saw it in the theaters, and that was well over twenty years ago. I'm guessing.
You know, I'm looking at them right now, and if you swapped out this picture of him, and if you swapped out his slick back hair for like a blonde mop of hair, he'd look like Donald Trump. <laughs> Which is very odd. <laughs> I never even thought about that. Until just now. As usual, this is looking kind of rough and not that much like the, the guy, but hopefully I will be able to pull together. Eric Hawkins says, uh, maybe they're one and the same. Has anyone seen, ever seen them together? No. However, they have both, they're, they are both alleged to be very close friends with uh, Vladimir Putin. So, there's a connection right there. Um... Let's see. 
Uh, let's see. E.R.T. says skinny Seagal or fat Seagal. This is going to be modern day Seagal. So I guess that that means fat. Um, <laughs> yeah, sort of like Oprah. Well, Oprah's always been fat. So I don't know if there's ever been a skinny Oprah. Um, you never know which version you're going to get. Yeah. Um, nah, this is, this is, this, uh, I mean, Seagal's been to my mind, fat Seagal, pretty much since around the year 2000, um, probably even before that, because I, I remember seeing him in, in films, and I was like, this, <laughs> it was it was kind of laughable seeing him uh, taking on 10 guys half his age, you know, who, who were obviously in good shape, and he obviously wasn't. ERT says, tweeted, oh, cool, thank you very much. Yeah, everyone, uh, if you would, please, uh, please share this live stream out to, uh, to your friends and families, co-workers, uh, and, uh, you know, tweet it out, put it on Facebook, let people know that I'm drawn, and, uh, yeah, I'd appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up, and, uh, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell for notifications of future videos. Evan Von Scriver says, uh, careful, Seagal kicks people. He doesn't really kick people, he just sort of throws them. So, you know, I'll, you know, he'll probably throw me into, like, I don't know, a hay bale, or, you know, hopefully he'll throw me onto, like, some, some soft grass or something. But he, he doesn't kick people. He does slap them, though. Um, apparently, you know, allegedly even his wife. Um... <laughs> Uh, Eric Hawkins says, Jiminy, not to start anything, but what's your take on the rumors of Magneto? What are the rumors of Magneto? I don't, I don't know what the, those rumors are. So, is he, is there a new movie coming out or something? I don't know what the rumors are. So you have to tell me. Um, Evan Voskar says, I was thinking Van Dam. Yeah, Van Dam. He, Van Dam. I like Van Dam because he has a, he has a good sense of humor about himself. Um, so, um, I think that makes him very, very likable. Um. But um, I'm not sure if Steven Seagal has the same same sort of self-deprecating sense of uh, sense of humor. So um, yeah, let me get back to this reference. So the MCU, Eric Hawkins says, wants Magneto to be black. <laughs> that's interesting. So. Um, that that that's interesting. I'm not sure how they're gonna do that since uh, and still keep his backstory, or maybe there's gonna. I mean, you'd have to completely rewrite Magneto because his whole thing was that he he was a Jew, you know, and who was whose family died in the Holocaust, and that's that's what's in, that is what has informed his his whole view of uh, mutants versus humans. So what, they want to change him into some sort of, like, Black Lives Matter activist and make him the angry black man who, uh, who wants to start a race war? I mean, isn't that what they just did with, um, with Killmonger and, uh, and Black Panther? Is it, to me, I mean, to my mind, that's just kind of stupid because basically what the MCU is saying is that every, any black villain has to want a race war between blacks and whites due to some sort of misguided or insane Hitler complex? Is that, is that what the MCU is saying? It sounds pretty racist to me, um, just on the face of it. Wanting, wanting Magneto, who, who's, who's basically you know, the, the mutant version of, of Hitler in many ways. He, he, wa he wants mutants to rule the earth and, and humans to be subjugated or eliminated by them. But he wants, he wants that character to now be black and have those views. That's, that's insane. Uh, Eric Hawkins says, uh, well, E.R.T.s, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily sound like Luke Cage because Luke Cage was basically just a super-powered shaft. Um... So, Luke Cage wasn't a quote-unquote angry black man just because he was black and he was mad at, at the man. He was mad at white people, you know. Luke Cage was just a guy who wanted to get paid. So, to me, that, that's, that's a completely different mindset. 
Luke Cage didn't care who you were. He, he, you know, he worked for Doctor Doom. He didn't care. He just wanted his money, honey. So um, that's all Luke Cage really cares about. Magneto wants something completely different. He, he wants the subjugation of the races. You know, the human race under the mutant race. And when you, and if you make his motivation for having that attitude, having that belief system to be, I'm, again, I'm, I'm guessing based on the fact that they want to make him black, the only reason he would have to have that viewpoint that, that, that mutants should be superior to humans and should rule the human, the human race will be based on his experiences as a, as a black man. Just like the, the, the current the, the current Magneto, the classic Magneto, holds those views based on the way the you know his family and other, and other Jews were treated during the Holocaust. So um, yeah, it, it, I think I think it's a if that's true that the MCU wants Magneto to be black. I think it's stupid. It's, it's idiocy, and uh, it just it simply confirms my belief that the MCU died with Stan Lee and with Tony Stark. So, um, yeah, so keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing, MCU. Keep making really asinine decisions that, are compl- that don't hold true to the, your, your own characters, your own, uh, the original source material, and completely screw things up for reasons of, uh, of political correctness and, uh, and social justice. That will, uh, that will serve you very poorly, um, uh, I can pretty much guarantee it. At the very least, it'll guarantee that that I won't spend money on your movies. So, the MCU is saying the current Magneto will be too old to be realistic since he is a Holocaust survivor. All you have to do is just say that his 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 mutant powers have made him essentially immortal, so he ages slower than than normal people. That's all you have to do. It's very simple. They've been doing that since. You know, they did that in freaking Highland, Highlander, you know, 30 years ago. It's not difficult to make an excuse that part of Magneto's mutant powers is is the slowing of his age. They do it with Wolverine. Wolverine has the same stupid power. Just do just do that. Exactly, e. Ortiz. Um, it, it, that, like I'm saying, there's it, no excuse for the MCU to make a stupid decision like uh, like Magneto should now be black. It, it would destroy the character. It, it would it would it would imply things about the character and about and about black people in general that is is not only not only offensive but would be harmful to um, you know the whole discussion of, uh, of of race in America. It's stupid, but I, you know, so, social justice. Modern social justice, I should say, contemporary social justice, is very short-sighted like that. All they see is, you know, let's put a minority in a in a visible role in films or television, and it doesn't matter if it makes sense or not, or what the effects of or the implications of, of that um, placement would be. So, I mean, it, 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 people suggesting this or making making these. Uh, Having these ideas are, 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 are I don't know, to my, they're, they're just stupid people. They're more focused on, you know, whatever social agenda they have than they are on not only being true to the character, or but uh, having the, making the character actually make sense. Because a black Magne- Magneto does not make sense. I mean, if you even if you even just look at Magneto in uh, in the recent Fox films, the reboot um, with uh, Michael Fassbender, I mean, he's basically immortal. I mean, he was 35 in uh, in X Men First Class, which was set in 1961 when when Kennedy was president, and he's the same dang age in the latest movie, Dark Phoenix, which is set 30 years later. How does that happen? He must be immortal. There you go. Bam. They've already set it up. All right. Now you can tell I'm talking too much because this drawing is going off the rails and is completely miss proportioned. 
It's really misproportioned. Holy mackerel. I'm just like glancing back and forth at it. I'm like really messing up. This is why I don't generally talk and draw at the same time. <laughs> or why it's a bad idea. This is why it's a bad idea that I talk and draw at the same time. Now you're seeing all my mistakes. I mean, this is, this is, right now, this is a caricature of uh, Steven Seagal. This does not look like Steven Seagal. So, I think I, I'm going to have to go back and go in here and start fixing it up. Yeah, ERT's whole uh, Fox continuity is wacky. Um, Eric Hawkins says, thank you. I agree with you on all points, but wonder your opinion. Was thinking maybe I'm, I was too old-fashioned. No, you're not too old-fashioned. You, you, unless having common sense and a good sense of storytelling is old-fashioned, you're not old-fashioned. You're just smarter than the idiots at, at uh, the MCU who are running the MCU right now. So, as I said, it's, uh, you know, if, if the MCU had, th had this attitude back in 2007 when they were making Iron Man, the MCU would have been a failure. So, they uh, need to get their need to get their house in order and quit, quit screwing around and, and trying to make woke points and just focus on making great movies um, based on their multi-billion dollar IPs. Because they're, they're, they, they, they risk losing billions of dollars with the uh, with idiocy like like uh, like that, so. But again, I, part of me encourages them to keep 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 on uh, keep keep screwing around with the, with their with their characters. I, I part of me would greatly enjoy seeing Marvel's proverbial per, proverbial not proverbial, but handed to them at the box office by fans who completely reject. Such idiocy. Nope. Come on, stay. You know, you are now watching another edition of How Not to Draw a Portrait, starring Jason Robinson, illustration by design.
what I'm probably going to end up doing is I'm going to do what I can up until 5 o'clock. And then um, I'll finish the, uh, I'll finish it off after Drawn and Quartered tonight um, on uh, Black Lace Universe's channel. So, this is, this will be part one. I'm going to guess. Because I don't think I'm going to... I don't think I'm going to finish this before five, but I can I can get a solid, fairly solid, if I can if I can fix it up. Fairly solid foundation on this. This is the most valuable tool in my art supplies. <laughs> it fixes all my mistakes. Let's see, um, Wolverine on Drawing Quarter tonight and Bombshell on Drawing Quarter Fan Edition tomorrow night, says Eric Hawkins. Uh, Eagle 43 says Bombshell. Yeah, Bombshell. Bombshell is a character created by, uh, I think Jay Isaro something or other. Um, and it's a new character. Um, I try to find information about her online. It's very hard. If you go to Jay Isaro's um, YouTube channel, um, you can find a lot more information in it than anywhere else. He had, he had one posting about it. Everything else was like really short blurbs and I couldn't find any, out any information about the character. So, um, if you're interested in either drawing tomorrow night, the character, or just, uh, finding out about her, um, just Google, Google Bombshell and J, um, the, the initial J and then Ish, Ishiro, I-S-H-I-R-O. Um, that's her creator. Um, and you can also find him on YouTube. So. 
but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try I'm gonna try Drawn Quarter Fan Edition tomorrow. See if I can do okay in it. Hopefully, I will. Um, and uh, we'll see. We'll see. Nothing else. I will. Uh, I'll have fun. So. I'll get to practice drawing some more, <laughs> which I always need. I need all the drawing practice I can get, so. Okay, this is starting to look a little more like them. It's getting there. But it's got to keep on plugging, keep on plugging away. Yeah. Hold on. says I'll vote for you unless I decide to draw two. <laughs> um, well Eric even if you uh, even if you draw two vote, still vote for me. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Alright let me keep drawing. tablet because this thing keeps on keeps on dying on me how long is your tab how long are tablets supposed to last this one is how old is this I think it's five or six years old it should last that long right <laughs> come on come on tablet work this thing just die on me? No. Okay. Ugh. Frustrating. Six months? Says Evan Muscrivers. This tablet should last more than six months. Or else what's the, what's the point? I'm not spending hundred plus dollars on something every six months. I do need a new tablet, so. So you can help me out by uh, commissioning me for drawings. <laughs> you want me to draw something? Hit me up so I can buy a new tablet. <sighs> All right, come on. Alright. 
Steven to go. Alright, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Evan says they should last more than six months. Yeah, of course. Anything electronic, if it doesn't last like at least five years, it's not worth buying, to my mind anyway. I mean, my TV, I'm hoping, will last another, another 10 years. I think my TV's, my TV's six years old. So, you know, TV should last 15 years. Um, you know, a tablet should last, yeah, six years is good for a tablet. Um, where's the, um, ah, dag nabbit. All right. Government says that's why I never update my electronics. That's how they get you. Yeah, it's not even a matter of um, you never update your. Well, the problem is, is that I only update my electronics when they break. So, I mean, if I never updated my electronics, whenever something broke, I'd never get new electronics to replace them. So, you have to update them at some point. Um, my issue is that that point shouldn't shouldn't the point where you're forced to, to get something new shouldn't be before a certain date. I mean, there should the electronics should have a certain amount, of, certain shelf life in order to be viewed as a as quality as a quality product. A TV that that lasts less than ten years, to my mind, is junk. Um, you know, uh, in terms of lasting, in terms of like you know, not not breaking. Um, yeah, it should, a TV should last at least 10 years, per, preferably 15 years, 20 years if possible. Um, you know, a tablet should last at least five years. A computer should last at least five years before breaking. Um, so, uh, those, those are just my, uh, my benchmarks for, uh, for quality merchandise because you know if you, like I said if you're, if you're spending several hundred do dollars on, on on these things you should get your money's worth and you're not getting your money's worth if, if you're having to dish out several hundred dollars every every few months or every six months on a product um, so I tend to be very conscious about where my money goes. So when I when I see that uh, I'm having to spend a lot of money on something too soon, it annoys me. I mean, just my my washer and dryer in my place. I renovated my place. Um, well, not not the whole thing, but the the, the kitchen and the and the bathrooms um, ten years ago. And my washer and dryer had to be replaced uh, within the last year. Uh, I had to get a new washer last about a year ago, and I had to get a new dryer about six months ago because they, they both broke. And that I, I, that's not good. I mean, I, I think a washer and dryer should last longer than 10 years before they break. And, and, and the main thing for me was that each, each one cost, because I live in an apartment, I have to get sort of undersized, um, um, appliances, uh, mainly my washer and dryer, the, the, the stove and everything else are full size. But the washer and dryer, because of the space they're in, they have to be undersized. They have to be special apartment size appliances. And because of that, they cost, because they're smaller than usual, they cost about $500 more than, than a standard washer and dryer. So, so I had to dish out um, $1,000 for, for each one. So it's like $2,000 on, on, on a pair of washer and dryers um, every 10 years. That's, that, I, 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 that's garbage. Um, if I had to 
cough up that much money for washer and dryer. I want it to last 20 years. <laughs> I don't want to want. I don't want it to just last a decade before I have to you know cough up uh, you know another two thousand dollars. And 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 again, you know, by the time I have to buy a new one, it's probably going to cost more than that. Um, so it's kind of ridiculous. I'm, I'm, it's, like I said, I, I tend to be m very mindful about where my money goes because <laughs> my uh my my disposable income is limited um and uh i'd rather uh rather not waste it um on uh, on products that that don't have a have a long shelf life Let's see, Eric, uh, let's see, uh, I'm just a lot of stuff here. Okay, I'm going to have to go back and, because I have to draw, um, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to go back and look at the comments in a while, um, but I, I just want to get as much of Stephen done as I can, so I apologize. Um, I did see, uh, who is it, Eric Hawkins, He's, uh, he says, don't buy Samsung or LG appliances ever. Well, unfortunately, I just bought a, an LG um, washer and dryer, so <laughs> I'm stuck um, because that was the only that was the only product that um, that had that was the right size um, that had had an apartment size um, product um, appliance for, for my that was in my apartment. So there's that. But on the other hand, I have um, my TV. And my phone are both LGs, and and they're great. I love them. And my tablet is an LG, and and it's and it was also very good up until um, the point where it started acting weird on me. And again, the, my tablet is six years old, so maybe that is the the shelf life for for a tablet six years. I mean, I I, I guess that's okay. That's fine. And, and I, I didn't spend that much on it, but um, you know, I again, ideally, I would like I would like electronics to last at least a decade um my tv is an lg and i love it i've had it for six years hopefully it will last another at least another four years hopefully another 10 years um but uh it's a 3d tv and it's 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 so cool i mean i i i, I just love it um and the fact that it's 3d just makes it that much more awesome to me because 3d tvs they don't sell them anymore they're out of, you know, they're out of style or out of, uh, out of fashion in terms of electronics and stuff. So, but they still make 3D movies, so I can still, I can still watch, uh, the, you know, the latest MCU movies in 3D, and uh, yeah. So, to me, that alone make, made it wor worthwhile. Um, I think I paid, I ended up paying 300 and something dollars for it. Um, it was like a 47 inch TV. It's the coolest TV I've ever, I've ever had because before before that I think it was the first uh, very first flat screen I, I ever bought or ever had. So um, yeah, so to me it's like oh man, it's so cool. So I'm hoping it lasts forever, even though it won't. <laughs> Okay, it's starting to look like Steven Seagal. Or Donald Trump. Who's it look like? Steven Seagal or Donald Trump? You decide. Steven Trump. Donald Seagal. You know what? I th this, this sort of makes me think that uh, it'd be cool if... Well, he already kind of did. Timothy Lim. Um, with his Walmart comic, if he made Walmart like some sort of like a keto master, that'd be awesome. It'd be funny if uh, Donald Trump actually was like a martial arts expert and no one knew it, and then like someone someone attacked him and he just flipped him over his shoulder or something. That'd be funny. The 
press would probably demand that he be charged with assault if that happened. <laughs> Impeachment proceedings would follow. Years of investigations. Did Donald Trump learn his martial arts skills from the Russians? Hmm. Vladimir Putin used his judo. Is that why Donald Trump used it? Hmm. We must investigate. It'll be fun. Actually, now he's starting to look like, uh, Steven, Seagal, Steven Seagal's is starting to, this guy's starting to look like, um, Kim Jong-un now, too. I don't, what's going on here? I'm like, I'm like turning Steven Seagal into, like, every frickin' world leader. <laughs> Next he'll start looking like Angela Merkel. No, 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 don't disappear. Dang nabbit. That tablet tried to pull another fast one on me. Alright, good. Don't you do that, don't you do that. Everyone's Scarver says, can you draw Steven Seagal as a seagull? That would be awesome, that would be very funny. Um, and uh, Eric Hawkins says, looks like Seagal. Okay, cool. I know I said I, I just focused on drawing, and I lied. Stop it! Go back! Um, I have 15 minutes left before it's 5 o'clock, so let me see if I can get as much done as possible in that time. See if I can keep myself from looking at the chat again and talking when I should be drawing. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up, and uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell for notifications of future videos. All of you may have already done it, some of you may have already done it, none of you may have already done it. I have no idea, because I'm not looking at the chat, because I'm trying to draw, um, and I'm forcing myself not to look at the chat to see who's there and who isn't, but I'm very tempted to do so, because um, I'm nosy. And somewhat narcissistic that way so <laughs> um oh and also please if you haven't already please share this uh, live stream out to uh to twitter and to facebook and and such and such um so that people will know that i am live streaming so that youtube will know that you guys like this video and that you are sharing it out and so that the youtube algorithms will be happy and will treat my uh my content and my channel favorably and look on it um with uh with uh with good favor let's see Hmm. 
I like drawing. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot like sculpting. It's um. I mean, you're not, in a sense, you're sort of taking away graphite to form the shapes, and uh, I find it, I find it kind of fun and relaxing to do that and see, see actual artwork come to life. Come on. I don't want this to look like a caricature. It's just, um, I don't know, something, something off. Is he too elongated? I can't tell. I'm gonna have to, when I get back to this tonight, after drawing a quarter, I'll be able to focus more on making it look realistic. As, oh, not. Well, more proportion-wise, more realistic than uh, than it might or right now. Just looks a little too, a little too stretched out. In some ways.
Okay, this is... Like I said before, I'm going to finish this later on tonight when I get back from figure drawing class. And, uh, I'll, you know, I'll finish it after Drawn and Quartered, um, which is on Mike S. Miller's channel, Black Lives Universe. It starts at uh, 10 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it ends probably around 12.30. Um, again, Eastern Standard Time, 12.30 in the morning. So check that out. I'll probably be there helping to moderate. Um, and I'll be posting a poll, I'm guessing. Um, but, um, yeah, you guys, uh, come back here after that, um, and, uh, and I'll finish up this drawing. Uh, because this is, it's, it's, it kind of, it's starting to look like them, but the, it, like, it's kind of, it's, 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 um, there's stuff off. And I can see that it's off. I know it's off. You, you can probably see that it's off. It's, it's weird stuff's going on. And um, it takes time for me to puzzle that stuff out and to figure out exactly how, what, well, what, first, what's, what's off, what's wrong, and then two, how to, how to best go about fixing it. Uh, I kind of know what's wrong right now. It's this, it's this, I've elongated his face. His face is squatter. Mmm. It's squatter. I gotta figure out some way to to fix it. Gotta figure out some way to fix it. Anyway. That's Steven Seagal to this point. It's about an hour of work. So hopefully. In the second hour, I'll be able to correct what is ailing it. Uh, let me look in the back in the chat. There are, how many people are still in here? There are four people still in here, which is awesome. I hope everyone has liked this video and given it a thumbs up. And everyone has subscribed to me and everyone has shared this video out to everyone else throughout the world so everyone else can see it and uh, complain about it as well. Uh, let me look at some of these chats before I um, close this off. Um, Electronics are fine, says Eric Hawkins, but their appliances are horrible and hard to get parts for. I guess she's talking about LG. Yeah, that's possible. So, I guess I'll find out soon. Um, again, I don't know. I couldn't find any other company that had um, a, you know, appliances that were small enough to fit in my in my space. So, I was kind of stuck. Um, Eric Hawkins says, I work for the largest appliance parts distributor in the country. Most servicemen get parts for us from us. Um, Samsung had one ice maker on back order for nearly a year. <laughs> wow. Um, Eric Hawkins says, looks like Seagal. Um, Evan Von Scarver says, what happens at five? Well, at five, I need to, I need to get ready to, to leave. I need to, I need to take a shower, I need to shave, I need to get a bunch of stuff done before I actually take off, so. Um, Evan Von Scarver says, pumpkin? Oh, you talking about turning into a pumpkin? Yeah. Well, I look like a pumpkin right now, so I need to, I need to uh, turn into, turn into uh, Cinderella before the ball. Um, who wants to bet he's looked at the chat? Well, I, well, I'm looking at it right now, so you won that bet. Um, <laughs> uh, Eric Hawkins says that's an epic double chin. Looks just like him. Uh, Dark Knight Returns Nighthawk Warrior says cool. Why is Steven Seagal looking fat in his face? Um, have you seen? Have you not seen Steven Seagal over the last twenty years? He he is not the same guy he was back in nineteen eighty eight. He has changed quite a bit. Um, and Jay Potts says the eyes say Seagal. Good start. Okay, well, cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Jay Potts. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back and finish this drawing later on tonight. Um, between probably between twelve thirty and one. Um, because that's going to be after tonight's Drawn and Quartered, where they're going to be drawing uh, Wolverine. So you guys should check that out. It'll be fun. All the all the great artists from uh, Mike S. Miller to uh, Matthew Weldon will be there. And uh, you'll get to see some really, really awesome artwork in only two hours. These guys draw really awesome artwork um, start to finish in two hours. So it is, it's really kind of awesome to see. Um, uh, Dark Knight Warriors says, oh, so you're drawing him older, not younger. Well, yeah, I'm drawing him ha 
the way he looks, not not necessarily now, but the way he, you know the, the picture I'm drawing from is probably probably a decade old. So you know he's he's looked like this for the last twenty years. So yeah, I'm not I'm not drawing him, you know, in his prime. You know when he was uh, in you know above the law or something. You know I'm not drawing the above the law Seagal. I'm drawing the the later Seagal, say the 2007 Seagal. So um, the eyes say that it's him. Okay, that's good. That, I'm halfway there then. So. Um, but yeah, so guys, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thank you for, um, oh man, he looks terrible. That's awesome. That's, that's, that's not nice. Um, but, um, I'll be back later on tonight, like I said, or early tomorrow morning. And, um, I will, again, subscribe to this channel. Um, hit the bell for notifications. Check your settings. Make sure that your notifi notifications are set for all. So, um, so that when I do post the link... Um, when I do upload the next uh, live stream, YouTube will notify you, um, and you'll you'll get a heads up. So I will do that later on tonight. So count on that. Go watch Jordan Quarter tonight. I'll be there, hanging out, probably making fun of people, um, or mainly just focusing on the on the poll. So um, hope to see you guys later. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Stay out of trouble, and I will see you soon. Okay. Bye bye.